Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and in addition to just bad business decision, there's been a ton going on in the world of Unity. Specifically, about a month back, Unite, uh, they announced Unity 6. Now this was a pretty major announcement, a lot of people ask, why didn't you cover this? Is it you're not covering Unity stuff? Of course not, I'm still going to cover all of the Unity news on this channel, it is still a very good engine, and it's still probably the most popular game engine in the world. So of course I'm still going to cover it on this channel. In fact, the reason I didn't cover it is because I was at Unite. Now I actually had a video produced and ready to go. The problem is at Unite, Unity announced a bunch of crap that they weren't going to and they changed a bunch of things so it completely ruined my Unity 6 video. But the good side is I was there and I got to speak to a bunch of Unity developers, people on the core team, so I can give you a bit of insight into what is going to be happening in the world of Unity in the near term. So basically in 2024, what Unity 6 is all about, why you should care, and if you are uh, completely opposed to the runtime fee, what you can do about it, like what the last version that you can safely stay on is. So let's first kick things off with Unity 6 and why they rebranded it to Unity 6. And for this, honestly, there are a couple of reasons. The first one is very, very simple. The current naming system is stupid. <laughs> so that's uh, why they're switching to Unity 6 on one level. Uh, let's say, for example, right now you wanted to install Unity. What version do you install? Well, the recommended version in the Unity Hub is actually this one right here. Unity 2022.3. And that is so counterintuitive to everything you could think of. The version, the long-term stable or long-term supported version is literally the one from last year as we are turning the calendar into next year. The, the, they never really kept up the whole naming convention uh, in a timely manner that the uh, text stream slash release with the chronological date ever made sense. Now, on top of that, they're also renaming Unity 6 uh, because quite frankly, Unity 6 is going to be the first version with the runtime fee. So it makes a lot of sense to have a, a very clear clear delineation uh, between before and after. So when the first Unity 6 LTS release ships, that is the version with the runtime fee. Now on top of it, why 6? Would they just go with what Unreal Engine is 5, so let's add plus 1 to it? Well, not really. It's the last version of Unity using a typical numbering system was Unity 5 point something, so 6 makes sense. Now the funny unintended side effect of that is it also kind of makes it sound like, okay, all of these releases in between the Unity 2019, 20, 21, 22, all that stuff, let's just pretend they didn't happen, which kind of makes sense because a lot of that was us waiting for usable features like, you know, the render pipelines and the dots and ECS and all those things to actually be usable. Uh, so now that we're kind of at the point where most of the core features and functionality actually work, or at least kind of work, uh, you know, let's just pretend the whole 2020 series and, and on just didn't happen. So that could be part of it as well. So along with the rebrand to using Unity 6 instead of Unity, you know, and then date, uh, there's actually going to be some changes with the way they brand their sub-releases. Uh, and again, they're, they're just kind of coming into line uh, with more industry standards here, kind of going a little bit back to the way things were before. So what we used to have was uh, like a Unity LTS and then a text stream. Text stream would add all the new shiny features, and then the LTS would be like the... Um, of the long-term stable version, the version that you should actually use that is going to get support for a number of years going forward. And then in between, we had like weird betas and so on. Well, now we're going to use a much more, again, traditional approach to this. Uh, we may or may not have alphas. We're going to have alphas, but they may not be publicly released. Uh, so you can have a beta and then a preview. So preview, you can think of as like a release candidate. Uh, so again, alphas may or may not happen. We're going to go beta preview, and then you will have the release version, and that is the LTS version or the long-term support or long-term stable. That's the one that's going to get the most security fixes and so on going forward. Now, in terms of what you're actually getting here, a beta is still going to add new features. So the beta is basically the equivalent of today's text streams. That's the one that's going to add all the shiny new breaking features, whereas the preview version is 100% feature frozen. They should not add any new features at that point in time. Like I said, in a lot of other setups, like for example, if you're a Godot developer, the preview is the equivalent of a release candidate. It is all about like shaking out the bugs, getting things as stable as possible going forward. And then after that, you will have your full release. Now, going past Unity, six, we could see like a 6.1 or 6.2. Uh, so we may have multiple versions, six LTS versions. So it's not going to just jump to Unity 6 is the LTS, then Unity 7 is the LTS and so on. We may have dot releases in between. Now, the one thing that you may be wondering also is the timeline here. So what kind of timeline are we looking at on all of these releases? Well, the first beta uh, should be very, very early 2024. So again, all these numbers could change, but these are what they are working towards. I'm going to give you kind of roughish 
numbers, not exact numbers, but the first beta release should be next month if you're watching this video as I release it. So uh, early 2024, hopefully January, we will see the first beta release of Unity 6. Uh, then a few months after that, we should see the preview release. So maybe like May, June, July, that kind of window. Again, this one is going to be feature complete. And this is very important. I'll get back to that in just a bit. So this is the version that has all of the new stuff in it that has been announced at Unite. All the new features, we'll get to some of the features in just a second, but this version, the preview release is going to be uh, again a few months after. So uh, Q, Q2 probably, and so May, June, July area, possibly a, a little bit later. Again, these numbers are not super set in stone, uh, but what we do know is that Unity 6 itself will be in 2024. So that's the best date I can give you. Uh, probably means, you know, December, November, December, that kind of area. But the one thing that you'll find, and, and you can probably take it to the bank on this one, is that these will probably be timed alongside of major events. So again, uh, late in the year, they have uh, the Unite conference. What makes It would make sense for Unity 6 to be right around then. Also, uh, we have um, the uh, GDC as an example. So that might be when we get the uh, new uh, preview release going. But the beta is definitely uh, at least planned to be very early 2024. So pretty straightforward numbers. Beta, early 2024. The uh, preview release, middle of the year, hopefully on the earlier side of that number. Um, possibly even you know GDC early, but I wouldn't bank on that one. And then the only commitment we have on Unite or Unity 6 is that they are aiming for 2020 for release and obviously probably pretty late in the year. So that's the timeline we were looking at on getting these releases out there. Now, one thing that is super important to realize is that preview version, so that Unity 6 uh, preview release that is going to be coming like early mid-year, uh, that is the equivalent of a tech stream release. And that is the last release, the very last release that you will get that does not have the runtime fee enforcement. So if you want to use all of Unity 6's features, they're all going to be in there. Now, of course, Unity 6 LTS is going to have a layer of hardening. And more importantly, it is going to have uh, you know ongoing support, on ongoing updates, and so on. So as new platform SDKs are released and new uh, features are added and fixes are added and that kind of stuff, those will all be in the LTS version. Whereas that preview release, that is the last version you can get that will be exempt from the runtime fee. And yes, you can 100% use that version to create and ship uh, commercial projects. Though do keep in mind, it was never recommended to use LTS version, or sorry, um, tech stream versions uh, for production. And you know, I'm, I'm assuming that the same thing is true uh, for these preview releases, but that preview release isn't, you know, buggy mess kind of thing. And it will continue to get like major security patches and that's it. But that's about all it's going to get in terms of updates. So uh, if that one works for your game, you can stick to it, you can ship games with it, and you will not have to pay the runtime fee, which is a very important thing to point out. And then finally, we get into a Unity 6. What do we actually get here in terms of new features? And this is the fun part. So uh, let's look at some of the highlight features from this year's Unite announcement. Now, of all the things I saw, these are the things I think most game developers should get most personally excited about with Unity 6, and that's in the renderer. Because a lot of these things are basically, turn it on, your world gets better. Now, obviously, you got to wait and see how well these things actually work, but in demo form, a lot of this was actually pretty impressive. Now, first off, we've got a new set of URP, or ERP, Universal Render Pipeline uh, demos available up on GitHub. If you want to go ahead and check that out, it shows four different styles of art, games, etc., and what you can generate with the Universal Render Pipeline. Those are available up on GitHub if you want to go ahead and check that out. We also got the announcement of web GPU support for, uh, you know, creating web-based titles going forward. This will, I don't know if WebGL will go away, uh, but WebGL is definitely showing its age now. WebGPU is the new hotness in the world of uh, web-based games. So that is nice if you work in that particular space. And then we got a couple of different technologies for the renderer. A lot of these are both ERP and HDRP, uh, which is good to hear. Uh, we've got the uh, GPU resident drawer. I read this as drawer every time I saw this, but the new drawer basically it is a rendering system, works behind the scenes, again, for ERP and the HDRP. Uh, makes for faster instance renderings of mesh renderers.
renderer. So this doesn't work with uh, skin mesh VFX, uh, particle systems, etc. Basically, this is a go faster button though uh, for um, standard mesh renderer. So if you've got a really complex scene of uh, simple meshes, it should just make it faster. So you can see this graph kind of showing you the example. So 2 million instances with it off, it went from 44 milliseconds to on to 10. So the 4.4 times uh, improvement there. And you can see a number of different examples. So from the ERP example for uh, on running on iOS uh, and A12 device, it went from 22 milliseconds to 15 milliseconds, so 1.5 times increase. And this is literally one of those features you just enable. So it's a better instancer renderer for uh, mesh instances, but mesh renderer, sorry. So it doesn't work for skin meshes, VFX, particle systems, that kind of things. It literally, a very specific subset of meshes will just draw an instance faster than they did before. But again, it is one of those, you know, turn on, go faster buttons. Turn it on, see how much faster it makes your game and see how much it breaks. And hopefully it doesn't break anything at all and it makes things a bunch faster and it's just a win. Another thing that we got that is should in theory just be a win is GPU uh, occlusion culling. So this is going to take a load off of your CPU in terms of figuring out what should or should not be rendered. Again, it's another one of those things that you should just be able to turn on and see what it breaks and see how much it improves things. On top of that, we also have the announcements of STP, not Stone Temple Pilots, but Spatial Temporal Post Processing. This is uh, Unity's built-in or baked-in upscaling service. So this is sort of like uh, FSR from AMD or DLSS from NVIDIA. You can render at a lower resolution and upscale it. It's just going to be built directly into Unity 6 itself. And then the finer major new rendering feature is Adaptive Probe Volumes. Uh, these are for global illuminations. They're going to lay the way for future global illumination technologies. Uh, but basically, it's a faster way of setting up probes in your environment that should give you better results and should scale better across a variety of different hardware. So in terms of rendering, rendering got a lot of uh, nice new features there. Also, for just uh, the URP side of things, we now have URP support for render graph. And a render graph is described by Unity as a foundational system that automatically optimizes runtime resources for rendering, simplifies the development of render features in our render pipelines while improving performance over a wide range of potential pipeline configurations, also reduces the likelihood of bugs <laughs> uh, when features are manually optimized. So render graph is now available for the URP as well. So graphic side of things, some definitely nice announcements at Unite for Unity 6. So these are all going to be in Unity 6. They're also, again, all going to be implemented in that pre-Unity 6 version, that uh, re um, preview version uh, that was equivalent of a text stream. So it's one of those things to be aware of. All of these features are going to be available in the version just before the Unity 6 LTS. Uh, on top of the rendering stuff, we also have um, a number of cloud features. I, I mostly gloss over cloud stuff, to be honest. Now, some things were added to your uh, Unity program, like your uh, Pro license alongside of the you know new runtime fee in the world of cloud we got new features like the asset manager which is kind of like a universal repository for your game assets it's kind of neat i'm not sure how many people are going to end up using that but it's definitely one of those things you might want to check out and then we got you know improvements to the dashboard and the devops stuff and so on uh it, it's still pretty early on at this point and some of the features and functionality were added into your pro license so you're getting some of this stuff for free which is actually kind of funny because they just want to lock you into their cloud anyway so they should be giving away this stuff to free to get you going and, and interested in it in the first place but we definitely had a couple of cloud announcements. Now, the other thing that we've got, and this is definitely a more controversial area just in general, uh, but we have Unity Muse and Unity Centis. Now, Unity Centis used to be called Unity Barracuda. It's basically a way of running... Um, AI models directly inside of the Unity game engine. Uh, so you can import these things in an industry standard format. You can get them from Hugging Face or whatever and run them inside your game without having to run them server side. So I guess you could do things like neural nets to control your AI characters, etc. I don't have a lot of experience with Centis. I just know, again, it used to be something called Barracuda. It used to be free too. Uh, now it is Unity Centis. And uh, the other thing that we've got as part of this AI suite is Unity Muse. Now, Muse is built of a couple of different features. You've got chat you've got sprite and you've got texture. And it's basically, uh, the first half is, uh, so the chat is more or less like chat GPT for Unity. It's basically been trained on their documentation. And I assume on other open source code, just like chat GPT is, it, it actually I think was licensed from OpenAI. So probably built off the same logic, but it, then it was trained on uh, their own code set, their internal repositories and that kind of thing. Uh, this is a service you can use to basically write Unity code for you, ask questions and so 
on. Now, the the, the head scratching thing here is right now it's implemented as a web page. Uh, so you can go to that site and ask questions, get it to generate Unity specific code, help you debug your code, that kind of stuff. It's just not integrated directly into Unity, which I, I find kind of insane. I think in time it will be. And then the other side of the thing is like the generative side of things. It's definitely the more controversial side. Uh, here you've got uh, sprite and texture that is for generating uh, 2D and 3D sprites. Uh, this is all available now. I think it's like 30 bucks. Uh, and then the other one is uh, for texture. So it's available in early access, but they're charging you $30 a month for it. I honestly think it's way too early to be charging money. Um, and there's also going to be like a credit usage system, but right now it is being waived. So if you're willing to drop that 30 bucks, uh, you can use this generative art stuff. Uh, again, I would say that this is by far the most controversial side of things. And then we've got a couple of, you know, coming later. Now this isn't going to be in Unity 6. It's probably never going to be, to be honest, because I think almost all of these features are made of a hundred percent bullshitium. Like it's just, I don't think that these things really exist other than as like a concept in someone's head, but they look nice in, um, you know, a presentation. Here we have behavior, which is for uh, controlling your character interactions. Animate for creating 3D animations. Now I've seen a couple of AI based 3D animation solutions out there and they're just laughably bad. Be interested to see if they pull it off, but I don't really imagine. And then Sketch, and Sketch is for doing um, collaborative uh, markups before importing into your sample scene in the editor. Uh, so you're gonna have you know these tools. So Sketch was kind of reminded me a bit of the um, ChatGPT integration that we saw for using Unity to create scenes and automate stuff. If it actually happened, that is the kind of AI stuff that we actually wanna see, uh, but will we get it? I don't know. But again, they announced behavior, animate, and Sketch, and I wouldn't expect to see any of them, well, ever, to be honest. But hey, I could be surprised and they may exist, but they really felt like pure marketing BS to me. So uh, the big thing with Muse is Muse has chat, sprite, and texture, and it's 30 bucks a month, and it's basically uh, chat GPT integrated into Unity as far as the Muse generative stuff goes. And then chat is like a data model learned on Unity's documentation, etc., for generating Unity specific code. But again, mind boggling, not built into Unity to start. So you actually have to go over to a web page and then bring the stuff in very odd that way. I think it's way too early to be charging for this stuff. And I think a lot of people are just like, uh, not that as excited about AI as uh, Unity seems to think we are. But hey, maybe your opinion is different. Maybe you're all excited about the Unity uh, AI stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments down below in terms of that regard. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the the big things. We got a couple of other things like, um, you know, the MetaQuest announcements, the AR stuff, the Unity is the official SDK of, uh, you know, Apple's new $3,000 or $2,500 uh, AR headset. I'm not sure how big that's going to be, uh, but they implemented something called Unity Polyspatial at the same time. Uh, so that obviously, is coming going forward. Uh, so they're announcing Unity Vision OS beta open to all pro enterprise and industry customers as of today. That's another aspect I've seen. It seems like they're going to be pay gating a little bit more into the pro version and away from the free version. So one of those things to be aware of with Unity 6 going forward. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a top level look at what you can expect from Unity going forward. So all these things are basically uh, 2024. You can expect a release very early in the year, hopefully in January. Uh, that will be the first beta release, and then we will get the uh, preview release mid-year, early mid-year, hopefully. Again, all these dates are subject to change. That was the equivalent of the tech stream releases from a past life. Uh, so you can use those in production. You're not really supposed to, but that one is super important because that is the last release before the Unity runtime fee kicks in. And then we have Unity 6. All I can give you in terms of a date there is that it will be in 2024. It will be an LTS release. It will have the Unity runtime runtime fee attached to it. And that is like the long-term support version going forward. That's what Unity 6 is going to be all about. And that, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully cleared some things up for you about the future of Unity. And again, on the channel, people wonder, are you going to continue to cover Unity? Of course I am. You know, their executives may have done some really, really, really stupid things, like really stupid. And I'm going to cover those things as well. I'm a very honest channel in that regard. When someone does something bad, I'm going to cover it. But I cover the world of game development. I still like Unity. Again, the company did some really stupid things, but it is still one of the biggest, most important game engines out there. So of course I'm going to cover it on the channel. And the reason I didn't cover it because of Unite is number one, I was at Unite, which gave me some insight that you saw in this video today. And two, again, I did have a video and then they announced a whole bunch of crap that made my video redundant. So that's why it never happened. So hopefully this look at the road ahead for Unity 6 was useful to you. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. 
Goodbye.